What's happening? Hey, How's it going? Chef Ray is going to create some new items that we're going to roll out into the new restaurants a little bit at a time to test them. Um, some really cool stuff with lobster. His background with the Cheesecake Factory, BJ's Pizza, and a whole bunch of other restaurants is uh, unparalleled. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what he's going to share with us today. Did you uh, get our nice open during construction signs that we hung up on the buildings? As many people that might think we're closed, look at how many people are still here. And we still, our phone rings off the hook every day with that same question. I, oh, you're open? I heard you guys were closed. I heard you guys are going through a remodel. No, no, we're open, we're here. So how many calls a week do you get asking for SpongeBob? If you're in there for the next few hours, you will flag a call that is for SpongeBob. Guaranteed. It happens all day long down here. And they've got used to it now to where they'll ask for SpongeBob and the guys will play back. Oh no, he's not here right now. Okay, cool, I'll call back later. And they just they just play with the kids just to play with them. It happens all day long. Is it common knowledge that Krusty Krab is owned by the same families that own San Pedro Fish Market? A lot of people don't realize that. Like when it slows down in the winter time, I think that affects us because so many people know the fish market name, so they go there. And this place is just down here. It's a little bit more of a ghost town down here than I was anticipating. But we're gonna do a, a, a well, Mike, the strategist, is gonna do a lot this year to fix that. Even though Krusty Krab and St. Peter Fish Market essentially offer the same seafoods, they cook things a little different. Krusty Krab does it different than St. Peter Fish Market. Our customers wanna eat faster, they're hungry. So we take the bone out, the inside bone out, and it literally cooks that much quicker. Customers love it. A little different, same butterfly technique. Just bone out. Their michelada recipe is a little different than our michelada recipe. Their methodology for preparing barbecued fish is much different than ours. If they want it grilled, we butterfly it open like these here and put it on the grill. We're gonna start testing out to see just what is it that the customers prefer at each business with some competitions. This is my pitch right here, this, this pitch. This is my, my mama right here. One for you, one for her so far. So keep an eye on our social media and you can participate in some of these contests and you can vote. We couldn't decide on one winner. There'll be some spoils to the winner, we'll put it that way. If they wanna go ahead and challenge me, I would say bring it on. Okay, what do we got? What's going on here? All right, I've been playing around here a little bit, and I think you guys got all the components for a really good uh, torta, oh. a Mexican-style sandwich. So basically what we're going to start out is I'm going to cut this guy. I'm going to take a little bit of this garlic butter. You can never have too much flavor in a sandwich. And then we're going to grill this. We're going to get some nice texture on it. Then we're going to get some of our lobster over here. We're actually going to season this with a little bit of salt and pepper, just a touch of your Cajun spice. And we're gonna get this cooking on the grill. All right, what we're gonna do now, we're gonna add a little bit of crunch to it by taking some of this celery. Always goes really well with lobster. I'm gonna toss this with a little bit of uh, jalapeno mayonnaise uh, that we made up earlier. And just enough kind of to bind it. We take our bread, we're gonna give it a spread of beans. And again, it's a thin layer. You know, a lot of people, again, we don't want to make it a bean sandwich. Now we have this going on. What I'm going to do is add a little bit more of our mayo. Then we're going to go right on with our lobster salad. And then we're going to add in uh, the avocado. Then we're going to add in our cabbage. It's been lightly tossed. And that looks delicious. And then garnish it with a little bit more of the pico. Then basically we fold this guy over. Nice side of french fries. That looks awesome. awesome. There you go. Yeah. See all that lobster hanging in there? You got the black beans showing up on the top. Just a thin layer. You got the cabbage. It's going to have a nice crunch, but nothing too dry or bitter. And you got pico de gallo and avocado in there. So give it a shot. Oh my god. That is really good. You see, this one's got a little bit of heat, but yeah, it's not killing you. What's it from? All from the jalapeno mayonnaise, huh? Yeah. It's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. It's that good. It's that good. Right? It's that good. It's all over my face, isn't it? <laughs> Did you get 
What are you smiling about? Huh? What are you smiling about? I saw you. I got pretty happy about it. Are you smiling because I brought a camera with me? Oh. Are we working hard? Huh? Hardly working. <laughs> Honesty. You hear that? Hardly working. I'm going to do a, a take on fajitas and a Peruvian saltado. So first of all, I'm going to grab our lobster. We want to give it a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, just a touch of that jalapeno mayonnaise. Woo. Good stuff. We're going to take some of your Julian beautiful veggies. So we got green pepper, bell pepper, added some celery, and we got some tomato in here. Okay. So we want to get a little bit of heat on them. I'm going to sprinkle the lobster in there. Okay. Let it sit a little bit. And then here's the other, the strangest part, is they put french fries in it. What? I guess you haven't had, you haven't been to a, a good Peruvian restaurant. What we're gonna do is we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of tomato in there for color, that you don't cook that much. We're gonna throw in a little bit of uh, cilantro. cilantro, and then we're just gonna toss this together. We're gonna give it a little squeeze of fresh lemon around Woo! it. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna plate them up. Yes. One of the classic ways they, they serve it is they actually serve it with white rice and they'll do some black beans. Oh my God. We're going to use our handy shishito peppers because we're digging these a lot. The rice with a little pico de gallo. We're going to hit the beans with a little bit of our spicy mayo. You can serve it with a little side of warm corn tortillas. And there you go. A lobster saltado. Wow. I can't believe I was with that. Is. Good. <laughs> it's really good. It's incredible. So good. All right, Chef Ray. What what awesome. Yeah. Can't wait to uh, get to work on these and get them into the kitchen. Fantastic. Can't wait for the next round. Yeah, let's get her done. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you it. Bet. Had a wonderful time. I've been looking forward to doing this. I've been a big fan of this place for many years. I really enjoyed playing with food, uh, creating new things, and uh, I think it turned out really well. Let's go see where our GM's hiding at. Huh. Uh, two of them, look. One sitting down drinking a, I don't know, something sweet. And then um, Steven Seagal counting registers. God, I'm a dick. <laughs> no. Tim wants to do a competition between the Krusty Krab and the San Pedro Fish Market. What's the competition going to be? Huh? Come on, Noe. Noe. Nothing. Come on. Noe. Ricardo, talk. Look at him, man. Look at how excited he is. I'm excited because you're, cause you're yeah. messing with him. How about Ricardo? Me. Ricardo? Hi. Hello. You shy too? No. Not, not really. at all. Look at that. See, we found no the. Shame. We, Until I see they myself. almost look the same. Until, Until I, I see myself. myself. They say that uh, our camera has 15 pounds. That's just to make you feel better. Get out of it. Camera has 15 pounds. How many cameras do you fing eat? <laughs>